A roadside murder in Venezuela has prompted nationwide soul searching and put a new light on the violence in one of the most dangerous regions on the planet. Soap opera star and former Miss Venezuela, Monica Spear, gunned down along with her ex-husband this week after their car broke down on a country road. Their five-year-old daughter was also, she was shot in the leg, but she's all right, she survived. The 29-year-old was the face of Venezuela in the 2005 Miss Universe pageant. Now she's the tragic face of crime in that South American nation. According to the United Nations, there were more than 13,000 homicides in the country in 2010, the latest year the data is available. Or look at it this way. For every 100,000 people who live in Venezuela, 45 were murder victims that year. Now, in addition to Venezuela, several other Latin American countries are also struggling with violent crime to one degree or another. The nations highlighted in red on this map all have homicide rates higher than 30 deaths per 100,000 people, according to the U.N. And the numbers reveal the most dangerous country in the world is Honduras. It has more than 90 murders for every 100,000 people. So is there any rational explanation for for these astonishing numbers. We posed that question to Eric Olson, Associate Director of the Latin America Program at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars in Washington. Well, there's no easy explanation. It's a multitude of factors, obviously. I mean, some of it does have to do with drug trafficking, although in this case, uh, it's probably not at all related to drug trafficking. Uh, these probably are local criminal gangs that, that uh, hold up people on the highway. Uh, the, the bigger problem is uh, uh, police and a justice system that just doesn't work. There's a, there aren't enough prosecutors. There are not enough judges. Uh, police are very corrupt, uh, ineffective. So all of that creates an environment in which crime can prosper. Crime does pay. Uh, it grows. And as a result, there's more and more violence. Now, drug violence certainly plays a role in all of this. You take a look at Mexico, where one reporter told me uh, we woke up one morning and we were war correspondents. The country virtually at war because of the drug gangs. In that situation, when they look at the United States now, you see individual states beginning to ease up, at least on one drug, marijuana, and legalize that. What's the reaction? Well, it's a lot of consternation, frankly. Uh, the president of Guatemala, for instance, says, we've been paying in blood and lives here to stop the drug trafficking into the United States, and now uh, you have states in the United States legalizing. So I think there is uh, a growing conversation in Latin America about the wisdom of continuing on this so-called war on drugs, whether that's the best way forward. Uh, they have been doing it for 30 years, and the result has been more violence, more crime, uh, growing and swelling prison populations. Uh, and so there's a lot of questioning going on right now in Latin America. And when they see states like Colombia and Washington legalizing, uh, they throw their hands up and say, well, you know, maybe we should be doing something similar. Well, Uruguay, of course, is. And Uruguay is the one that's leading the way. It's the first country in the world to create a legal, regulated cannabis market. Now, we don't know if that's going to prove to be the smart thing to do, but it is an interesting uh, experiment that Latin Americans are looking at closely. Other major cities are beginning to decriminalize. Uh, Mexico City is, is soon to consider uh, legalization. Uh, of marijuana in Mexico City, uh, by far the largest city in Latin America. So there's a momentum there, and they're watching what happens in Uruguay, in Colorado, and Washington to see if this is the direction. Maybe it's not. Maybe things will get worse. But there's a lot of interest in seeing how it goes. Eric Olson, as we look at the violence problem there, perhaps the real question is, are the people of Latin America, is the leadership of Latin America looking at the problem of violence and toward solutions? They are. Uh, there are many ways in which they're doing it. There's a process hemisphere-wide right now to look at alternatives to the current drug policy. Uh, public security is a, a major priority at the Inter-American Development Bank, at the Organization of American States. The countries are, are looking at it, but you know, no one's come up with the perfect solution yet, frankly. 
Uh, and maybe there isn't a perfect solution out there. But uh, they are concerned about it. It is a major political concern amongst the electorate in so many of these countries. And so uh, a lot is being done to try to figure out what the best way forward is. Eric Olson of the Wilson Center, I want to thank you very much for being with us on The Brief. My pleasure.